Okay, I'm going to do another short video on WIMS, UPL, and PLDs. The short um, part of it is I could go on for probably 50 videos with this subject. There's not a lot of information out there, as I mentioned before, and um, I do think that this is something we need to have out there because these devices are very useful and there's not a lot of information and people do want to know about them because they'd like to be able to use them. The only problem is is that it's difficult and I understand because I've struggled with it myself. But there's another subject that I wanted to talk about within WinCUPL that is um, very handy and it helps to minimize your uh, fuse maps. And what it is, it's fields and arrays and tables and things like that. Um, it's very similar to what you would think of as a logic table, okay, um, or a truth table if you will. Um, so we're just going to jump into it. Now this code is code that I wrote a couple years ago back around 2005. I would actually posted it to um, instructables.com as BCD to hex 7 second driver. Okay, I posted, posted it in electronics and um, there's two variants. There's one that's a dual and there's one that's just a single and the single you can find um, here, right there. And of course, the code can be found on SourceForge. Um, of course, there's a link right here, but I'll put a link down in the uh, comments, or I'm sorry, down in the description. And um, you can download this, you can go through it, you can um, you know, use it like you wish. I don't have any issues with anybody using it. As you can see, my license is public domain. I stuck it out there for everybody to use. So, having said that, let's uh, take a look at it. Now, first off, we're going to go over the chip itself and the pinout. Now, as you can see, pin 1 is a no connect. We are using the uh, pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 as um, basically your inputs. And then our outputs, we're using um, pin 13 through pin 19, with 12 being left as a no connect. Okay? So, um, and of course, you know, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 11, those are no connects as well. I suppose that you could use those for some type of other decoding function, but we don't need it for this project, so we're not worried about it. Now, on the 22V8 variant, it's uh, pretty much the same, only instead of having uh, just the, you know, first four pins, or uh, I guess um, pins 2 through uh, 5 being used as the input, we're actually using pins 1 through 9. And the way this works is the first pin is going to be a clock pin. And then uh, pin 7, 6, 5, 4, those are going to be the first half. And then 3, 2, 1, and 0 are going to be the second. Well, or vice versa. Um, you've got your low uh, nibble here and your um, high nibble there. Now on the outputs, we're using um, pins 15 through 23. And what we've done is we've taken this clock signal and we've um, inverted it. So whenever the clock signal is high, one will be enabled. Whenever it's low, the other one will be enabled. And both of these are active low. Okay. And we'll take a look at the truth table here in a bit. But just know that that's what it's doing. It's for the, um, the common pin, the um, ground pin of a seven-segment display, which it's actually a common cathode, if you will. All right? So... Again, it is common cathode, and um, we're basically switching which display that we're actually getting the, um, or basically syncing the uh, voltage from, okay? Now, let's take a look at the code itself. Obviously, we have our code here, for, and this is for the single. Um, we have our code here for the 16V8. We have our input pins defined as um, pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 with, um, um, their bits being A0, A1, A2, and A3. Their output pins are um, pins 13 through 19. And then down here we have declarations. Now this is the important part. Whenever we say that we're uh, using a field and we have ADR or ADDR and then output, we're not saying that it's the output. We're just saying that this is the name of the field and these are the pins that are within that field. Okay, so 
we know that with ADDR we're speaking about an address so it just means that we're using address pins and then with the output of course these are the output pins this could be monkey um, it could be New York City uh, Jersey uh, you can name it anything as long as you know what it means that's all that matters now down here we're creating a truth table and with this we're saying the table is going to be ADDR if this is true then do this okay that's essentially all this statement means and then we have a parentheses and then a, uh, another one down here of course these are the um, I forget what the little I forget what those are called but anyways and then all we're doing is we're plugging in a binary number that is representative of a three two one zero so if you can think of it this way this is zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I'm sorry not ten but a b c d e and f okay now whenever it's zero we're basically just putting out the binary value of zero that's all we're doing okay and it's going to basically draw those on these pins here so it's going to make um, a1 b1 c1 d1 e1 f1 and then g0 and that way um, the you know middle bar the bar across the middle of the zero doesn't light up and it's just a zero that's all it's doing you're basically making comparison and then if it meets that comparison then this is going to be the output so it's literally just a truth table okay now if we want to take a look at the uh, dual display it's very similar the big difference is, is that we have two different fields for the inputs because we're going to have ultimately two truth tables and each one of these has a clock input okay and the clock input is the first pin of the um, address section and of course this is broken up into address A and address B so A, A, D, D and then B, A, D, D so A set of addresses, B set of addresses now as you can see if the um, uh, clock pin is low as it would be on the A set of addresses then it's going to go ahead and write to the uh, output field with um, let me see with uh, the I forget why I called it LEA but LEA is going to be the um, the enable pin for the um, segment okay so it's go going to be low on A which means it's going to sync all the um, inf or all the current that's coming from the output pins going through the LEDs and then coming out the common pin okay now on the B address if that clock pin is high it sets the LEA to high and the LEB is set to zero okay so it's just flip-flopped as far as the um, as far as the uh, pins themselves you know a through G they're all going to be basically the same because they're essentially going off the um, AD AC AB and AA but whenever they get down here it's going to be the same thing it's just going to be a different set of pins okay so you're using a different set of pins and you're also using a you know a different enable pin so it's just a way of shrinking it down one more thing that you want to make sure that you do and this is not to do with the code itself but it has to do with the uh, compiler options you want to go up to options and you want to go to compiler and then you want to go to minimization now on this it has several different um, options here uh, none quick I'm not even going to pr try to pronounce that and then presto and expresso my suggestion is to use presto um, I've had very good luck with it and what this does is it tries to compress down that fuse map to where it takes up less physical space on the chip itself in other words it takes up less of the fuse map in total which means that you can fit more code into you know the same amount of space it's always good especially whenever you're doing something like this if you were to write this out in logic equations you very well may have 10 to 12 um, equations for one pin and the reason why that's bad is because you're not going to have enough room
but if you do it this way you will so just keep that in mind uh, know that you need to um, you know set your compiler options of course there's other things that you can do and we'll go over some of this other stuff with time I think I'm going to do a couple more uh, videos on this uh, kind of show you maybe some of the registered logic and things like that um, but basically uh, this is something else that you really need to know if you're going to be doing any type of a uh, simplified complex logic okay and um, don't forget um, take a look at this in, or this instructable I'm gonna post a link down below um, it's got some good information things that you can read over on here um, you know, of course, links to download the software and things of that nature, and then also I'm going to put, you know, obviously the link for the software. Okay, and this is public domain. Use it like you wish. Um, I don't mind what you do with it. Just uh, get it out there. And get this in the hands of the people that can use it. All right. Hey, I appreciate the uh, um, time that you took to watch the video. Make sure that you subscribe. If you have any questions, comment below, and then obviously if you know anybody that has any um, interest in these subjects, go ahead and share my videos with them. Uh, just drop them a link to the page. Heck, if you want, even uh, post the link on Facebook. I don't care. Um, like I said, I want to help people out with their projects, and you know, I'm not the smartest guy in the world whenever it comes to a lot of this stuff, and I YouTube videos too. Um, you know, I get on YouTube and read I, I watch a lot of other uh, people's videos on their projects and things like that just where I have an understanding of what's going on so I recognize that um, we all you know have questions about things that we would like to do and if it weren't for people that actually put these videos out there for us to learn then we'd be in sad shape so in any case um, again subscribe drop your comments below and we'll see you next time thanks